Welcome back to Potter Park Zoo. Today, we'll see endangered lemurs, vocal hornbills, and hear the roars of two big cat species as we tour the historic feline and primate building. Originally known as the Lion House, this building has been a staple of Potter Park Zoo since 1930. It has undergone several renovations over the years, with the last major one occurring in 1989. Today the building is home to eight species, although only five of them are actually felines or primates. We'll be starting off our tour inside. On the left side of the building are three glass fronted exhibits for the big cats. The first is for a snow leopard, and the other two are sometimes combined for the zoo's African lions, especially during the colder months when they spend more time indoors. At other times, you may find the middle exhibit inhabited by an Amur tiger. Since we'll be seeing all of them again, for now we'll be moving on to a dimly lit cage located between the cats and primates. It was once home to mongoose lemurs, but now you'll find a pair of noisy trumpeter hornbills, who can frequently be heard making their signature call, which has been described as sounding like the cry of a baby. And roaming below them are two African crested porcupines that moved over from the small mammal modes. On the right side of the building are two taller glass fronted exhibits that serve as the indoor homes for a troop of black headed spider monkeys and ring tailed lemurs who, like the cats, we'll see more of later. And in between the two primate exhibits is a small habitat for a northern tree shrew. Outside, around the left side of the building, you first come to a tall, caged habitat where you'll find Taza, an eight-year-old snow leopard who arrived from the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago in 2019. Snow leopards are native to the mountainous regions of Central Asia, where they've been known to hunt at elevations of up to 18,000 feet. Their hunting abilities are aided by the fact that they are able to jump distances of up to 50 feet in a single leap. At this point, your attention may be drawn to a smaller habitat located across the path. This is home to Olaf the Palace Cat, another cat native to the highlands of Central Asia. This elusive species is affectionately known as the Grumpy Cat. And who can blame them? If I lived somewhere where the temperature dropped as low as negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit, I think I'd be grumpy too. Moving back to the main line of big cat exhibits, in the middle habitat you'll see Timmy the Amur Tiger. A newer resident of the zoo, Timmy arrived in the summer of 2021 and can often be seen checking out his neighbors or showing off his impressive roar. <laughs> The final big cat exhibit is a sloping hillside for the zoo's African lions, 18-year-old female Ulana and their 15-year-old male Koda. Like Timmy, Koda isn't shy about showing off his vocal skills and almost never fails to put on a show when I visit. <laughs> If you continue up the hill from the second viewing point for the lions, you'll come full circle around the building where you'll find the outdoor habitats for the primates. The first is for a troop of five black-headed spider monkeys. In the wild, they can be found living in much larger groups consisting of as many as 100 individuals. In the second exhibit, you can see their trio of ring-tailed lemurs. Kaina and her daughter Maddie, who came from the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo, and male Han, who joined them in December of 2021. Despite being very common in zoos, there is estimated to be as few as 2,000 ring-tailed lemurs left in the wild. In fact, it is believed there is now more ring-tailed lemurs in captivity than in the wild. 
And that concludes our tour of what is still the heart of Potter Park Zoo. If you'd like to learn more about the history of this zoo, I recommend reading Little Zoo by the Red Cedar, which chronicles the triumphs and struggles of this small city zoo. Thank mm -hmm. you.